you want to make sure that your workouts are intense enough, but not so intense that you prevent this process from actually occurring. What's up, YouTube, and welcome to Skull Bells TV. In this video, how your muscles metabolize amino acids. If you're on a fitness journey that involves building muscle, Bernardo Castellanos is here to break it down in layman's terms for people like me. He's going to walk us through mTOR, muscle protein synthesis, and protein to help you understand your body on a more intracellular level. Before we start, if you're not subscribed to the show, you can go ahead and do that. Hit that bell button after you do so that you don't miss upcoming content around meal prep, aesthetics, bodybuilding, nutrition. Smash that like button while you're at it, if you would too, please. Last thing, share this with someone at the gym and help spread the knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, Bernardo Castellanos. mTOR is the, I guess you could say the precursor to protein synthesis. Basically, it's the signal it's the little chemical signal, it's an amino acid actually, that's the signal to say, hey, we have enough amino acids in the cell, um, so let's initiate protein synthesis. But it's a little bit more complex than that. That's just the easy way around to say it. Um, what you actually need on top of mTOR being activated is a well um, energized cell, basically. You have enough energy to facilitate the building of new protein. Um, it can't happen with one, or basically it can't happen without energy being present or fuel being present to fuel that process. Mm -hmm. um, so mTOR is one of those things that if you want to build muscle, you basically have to be in a caloric surplus or, or you know, be on maintenance of some sort. You have to have adequate nutrition in order for that, that signal to occur. And even with that signal occurring, let's just say in a perfect world, everything is available. That doesn't mean that your body will initiate protein synthesis. It's a possibility, but the stimulus must be there for that to occur. Okay, so mTOR comes before muscle protein synthesis. It has to be there for muscle protein synthesis to take place, but it doesn't necessarily that muscle protein synthesis will take place. Am I understanding that correctly? Exactly. All mTOR is is say, all it says is, hey, all systems go, let's get to work. That's okay. all it is. So that's a problem if we don't have any food or any uh, protein and amino acids more specifically to yep. be able to use and put to work. Yep, so basically um, mTOR will sense that there's enough amino acids for the ribosomes in the cell to say, cool, let's do this. Let's build these, these new, this new protein. But it's basically, hey, cool, we can build it, but do we have the currency to do so? Right. It's like you got to pay those, those builders to build your building. You can have all the builders there, but if you don't have the money to pay them, they're not going to do the work. They're just going to sit there. Does that make yeah. sense? It's like have, it's like having a couple two by fours and that's all you have to lay your foundation. You don't have your you don't have your cement mixes. You don't have your nails, your hammers, everything else that you need to be able to actually get to work. Well, you can even have that. But if, if you still don't have the money, <laughs> that's really what it is. If you don't have the money to pay those those workers. Right. You can have all the tools, but somebody's got to do the labor. Yeah. Right? So they're, they're, it just it's a little bit more complex than that. But obviously, mTOR is like the precursor to protein synthesis if the stimulus is there. Right. And what I mean by stimulus, the workout that you're doing, is it intense enough to to elicit the response you're looking for? Most people don't challenge themselves hard enough to even get to that point. Right. It's like those newbie games. We all we've all been there. And when we first started lifting, it's like, cool, we're putting on all this muscle, all this muscle, all this muscle. And eventually you just plateau and you're like, oh, well, some people resort to what? Other means like taking tests or, or you know, some sort of steroid or something to enhance that production or to facilitate that production. Um, but in actuality, what they could have done is intensify their workouts, not necessarily do more. You don't, more is not better. Your intensity and your, your precision, your execution execution is actually better when it comes to building muscle mass, mm -hmm. right? So you can add all these enhancements in, but what good is it if the work is still not there? Right. Yeah. You, you see it abused so yeah. much when you, <laughs> the front of a magazine cover. Yeah. It's because I'm taking BCAAs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so do we want mTOR to be 
activated while we're working out or is that something to where like it should like no we need to wait and then have and then have mTOR activated um like after when we're actually able to recover and build muscle so it's almost um and i don't want to say it's completely impossible to activate at the same time you're working out but the main job of mTOR if obviously if we're in a in a catabolic state where we're just breaking down you know, energy to produce ATP, we're breaking down fuel, sorry, fuel to produce ATP. Um, mTOR cannot be present at that time because you're in a catabolic state. mTOR is more anabolic. So if the goal is protein synthesis, it's not going to occur as you're working out. The reason it doesn't occur is because you're burning through so much fuel at the same time. So if fuel is present for the work, it's not going to be present to build new protein. So in order for us to build it, we have to technically wait until we're done, you know, and and well fed for your body to say, hey, all systems go. We have energy. We have plenty of energy. Um, Let's do whatever metabolic processes we need to do in order to achieve whatever it is we need to achieve. Right. So you can't have one thing. um, You can't have mTOR working at the same time as AMPK, which is the other chemical signal that tells the cell to open up and receive all the incoming fuel right? All the glucose, right? It's, a, it's also a little bit more complex than that, but that is what AMPK essentially is. So if you've heard of ATP, mm-hmm. ATP, is, AMPK is ATP broken down into its complete signal, into its complete or simplest form, basically. So it goes ATP, ADP, then you have AMP and then AMPK. And AMPK is just the chemical signal to open up the cells. mTOR cannot be active as AMPK is active. That makes sense. Yeah. So one cannot be on at the or, or as the same time as the other one. Okay. Do insulin and mTOR kind of go hand in hand? Because when you're working out, your insulin is typically low, uh, which is kind of what you want, from what I understand, because that's how uh, your body's producing growth hormone. It's pro- producing testosterone, which is kind of why, like spiking your insulin mid workout with like a Gatorade or something is not necessarily the best idea as far as aesthetics are concerned, because now all of a sudden your, uh, your insulin's high and you're, um, kind of robbing yourself short of a lot of the other, um, hormonal processes that are going on. Is that accurate? Uh, to an extent? Yes. So insulin will disrupt a lot of the, the anabolic processes, right. Mm-hmm. Um, like growth hormones, testosterone, um, but Gatorade per se, or, or any type of fuel during a workout, it may or may not trigger an insulin response. And the reason I say that is because what's the purpose of insulin is to access a signal to tell the cells, Hey, we have plenty of fuel, you know, let's either turn it to fat or, or absorb it as adipose tissue or absorb it in the working tissue. Um, sometimes that, that may be the case if you drink a lot of Gatorade, but I'm not going to say it is because I don't exactly know. I'd have to actually look at somebody's, uh, insulin level as they drink the Gatorade while they're working out. But if you're burning through a lot of fuel, it's almost always not going to spike that high. Um, What I would say is avoid carbohydrates or any type of um, um, fuel before the workout, because if your insulin's high prior to your workout, then your workouts are going to suffer. You're not going to be able to perform as optimal. So Mm -hmm. if you're going to eat, eat two hours prior, eat an hour and a half prior, depending on what you're actually eating. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say insulin is, is one of those things that activates during your workout as much, unless it's like really, really heavy. Like if you completely stop and you start to drink a bunch of orange juice and Gatorade and a bunch of corn syrup, then yeah, it might spike. (laughs) (laughs) So if I understand correctly, while you're working out and training for muscle hypertrophy, um, you're actually breaking your muscle fibers down. You're really losing your muscles because you're in a catabolic state, but that stimulus is what makes it so that when you do go to eat your pers- put your post workout meal, now your your body changes from a catabolic state to an anabolic state, and you really can't be in both at the same time because of AMPK, insulin, and mTOR. They conflict with each other. Is that correct? Yeah, to, yeah, to an extent, yes. Um, in regards to you know being the fight or flight response, right? Because obviously. Um, once you're done working out, the last thing we want to do is be in that, be in that mode. We're not running away from bears. We're not running away from a lion, right? So why would I consistently be in that state? That state will actually hinder everything, 
All right. Most people, believe it or not, I, I, I would argue that more than like 60 percent of the population are constantly in that fight or flight response. Um, so a few things start to happen, like your digestion sucks, um, your recovery, like your sleep sucks. All those things will impact how you actually um, build muscle, right? Or how you actually gain strength or how you actually do X, Y, and Z. Like those things are very, very, if anything, I would argue they're much more important than working out. <laughs> Your sleep and nutrition are extremely important when it comes to anything in life. Yeah. Um, and most people sometimes, I was actually going to make a content about this the other day. Um, most people actually work out entirely too much, right? So muscle soreness is a, not necessarily the best indication of a good workout. Um, it does cause micro trauma. It does cause, you know, tissue to break down. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that tissue will come back stronger. There's a lot of other factors that you have to consider as well. Like if you cause entirely too much inflammation because your workout was very, very rigorous, right? I, I remember one time one of my coaches took me through a leg day. And this leg day was so brutal, right? And I'm sure this happened to you as well, Colt. Um, it was so brutal that, you know, that soreness lasted for about seven days, right? And I'm like, all right, cool. I hit a really good leg day. Uh, I'm going to go eat some trash, you know, right? Because I, I deserve it. I, I wanted a peak set that time. Yeah. Um, and then your muscles still look flat. Has that ever happened to you? Even after eating so much carbs or so much proteins, like have you ever gone through a workout so hard and you thought that your nutrition was so good, right? Because you ate all these carbs and you thought your muscles would look full the next day, but in actuality, they still look flat. On, on refeed days. Yeah. For me, I'm, 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 you know, more keto right now. So my, I'm never really full or flat. It's pretty well constant because, uh, yeah. because of being in ketosis, but sorry, I'm taking away from your did, point. Did you, did you forget <laughs> what carbs feel like? <laughs> <laughs> so it might be different for you, but for me, um, basically what that tells me is that, that there's so much inflammation going on in that area that the cells have decided to almost kind of terminate themselves um, or decided to block certain things from coming into that cell, nutrition being a big one, right? So remember, if mTOR it wants to activate and can only activate with nut proper nutrition, um, and those types of workouts are so brutal that it causes so much inflammation that the cell will refuses to open up because there's so much inflammation, so much damage. It, it refuses to open up to let incoming glucose or glucose come in so that it can refuel and, and do whatever metabolic processes we need to do. Um, that, that's the result of that, right? No fuel comes in there. I stay looking flat. So mTOR can't activate because my workouts were so brutal. And I've done that in the past, and it's happened to a lot of my clients in the past before I learned about all these things. So you want to make sure that your workouts are intense enough, but not so intense that you prevent this process from actually occurring. That makes sense? Sounds more enjoyable, too. <laughs> yeah, and all you need is a, it's not so much soreness that you should be chasing, it's more tension than anything else. Yeah. That's what actually, volume and tension is what actually initiates with good adequate nutrition protein synthesis. Mm -hmm. um, if the volume is not there or the intensity is not there, then you can forget it. You're not going to enter protein synthesis, right? Yeah. So the average Joe can get off the couch and pick up one dumbbell. He'll initiate protein synthesis right off the bat because he's never done something like that. But for somebody who's advanced like us, yeah, we have to be more precise with our stimulus and even more precise with our nutrition and recovery. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So when you are training or somebody else is uh, when, when a hypothetical uh, bodybuilder is training with the goal of build, building muscle, losing fat, you know, you're doing a 10 minutes of cardio just to warm up. And then you do your whole workout, however long that is. And then you're going to do 20 minutes of post-workout cardio, right? That's like a, a very typical bodybuilders workout. Yeah. And, the, and the cardio is going to be low intensity, of course, not hit cardio because the entire workout was basically hit cardio. <laughs> <laughs> so at the, it, 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 it's very popular to supplement, to literally just sip on BCAAs the entire time or like right before fasted cardio, because you're, uh, you know, whether you're not, wh whether, whether or not you're like actually fasting, you're basically in a fasted state and a catabolic state before you start your 20 minutes, 30 minutes of low intensity cardio post-workout. So it's very, very popular to supplement 
BCAA is thinking, oh, this is going to spare, this is going to spare muscle tissue. So I don't burn up any more muscle tissue while I'm doing my cardio and, I, and it'll tell my body to burn fat. Um, from what I understand, based on everything that you just said, it sounds like that will stimulate mTOR, possibly spike insulin a little bit. And both of those are going to impede fat burning um, and really not have any muscular benefits as, as, as far as like, am I, am I understanding that correctly? It wouldn't impede fat burning. So it's very difficult to say, hey, what type of fuel? Well, not really difficult per se, um, but what type of fuel is my body utilizing at this current time, right? We know that the more intense your workouts are, the more it's going to favor glucose, right? But sometimes, depending on the individual, um, they have a hard time actually releasing fatty acids from their adipose tissue um, because they might have some other underlying conditions. They might have too much inflammation. Their cortisol might not be working adequately, right? Yeah. Um, growth hormones might not be working adequately. So um, that's just situational. So I couldn't realistically give an answer. Like it's, 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 it's a maybe, <laughs> basically. It's like it can be, it cannot be. Like I couldn't give you a straight answer because everybody's different. Um, I can almost say in America, just in America alone with the obesity um, epidemic that we have going on, that most people are dealing with inflammation and that's probably why they're having a difficult time losing weight. Um, but to say that BCAAs will, so I'll, I'll put it to you like this. You can take BCAAs when you're working out. Is it gonna hinder you? Probably not. But is it gonna facilitate protein synthesis? Most likely not. Um, when's the best time to take it? Well, it really depends on you. If you're chasing it for energy, then you can use it for energy. If you're utilizing it for muscle recovery, then you can definitely take it after and utilize it as muscle recovery, right? You're not going to recover during your workout. That's just not the intent. Yeah. Um, now it's very difficult to break down muscle mass. You, you have to be, um, in a state of starvation. Like you literally have to be in, like, you ever seen those videos that uh, you wake up in the middle of the night, it's like 12 AM and they're like, hey, I want you to donate to these Ethiopian kids or something like that. Um, and you, they show pictures of these kids like they're starving, right? You have to be in almost that state for your muscles to start to waste, for your body to say, hey, I don't have anything else to use. Our last resort is muscle mass, mm -hmm. right? And you also have to take into consideration that your body does not like those bodybuilders that you see. Like, let's go with the greats like Arnold and all those. Those guys had a ton of muscle. Your body does not like that at all, right? Because what happens, what happens with tissue? Tissue is very metabolic. It costs a lot of energy, right? That energy can be used for much more beneficial processes like your immune system, for example, or, or your organs or just your brain function. Um, so the more muscle mass you have, you'll notice that it's actually more difficult to even consume the amount of nutrients you need, more difficult to put on mass. There are more ways to turn off protein synthesis than there is to turn it on. I remember you saying that on our podcast. Yeah. And that, and I, I think I went to bed depressed that night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, the sad truth, right? Because um, you have to look at it from a survival perspective. Your body's only job is to survive, right? And, and the stresses that you put on it and the reason it builds muscle mass is because it's a survival mechanism. It's not for aesthetics. It's definitely not for aesthetics. Um, it's just for your body to say, hey, you know, those that, that 225 pound bench press felt really, really hard. Um, I don't like how it felt and I want to make it easier. So let's start let's start doing a little bit more protein synthesis and put on more muscle mass so we can absorb more of that force. That's why you get stronger. It's not for any other reason. But if you immediately as soon as you stop, yeah, you'll start to lose strength after you know a few weeks to months. Um, but your body will instantly bring it back if, if, as long as you start that stimulus again, because the cells are already there. Are the motor units firing? Probably not, but will they fire a lot faster after you start working out? Yes, they will. Um, so don't be afraid to lose muscle mass. Be afraid that your nutrition is not on point <laughs> because that's where you truly reap the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. My mind is blown. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. Last question. The difference between BCAAs that are like usually tw dose twice as high in leucine as they are valine and isoleucine um, and the full blown EAA spectrum, which is, I believe, nine that are essential, 11. Yep. That are essential. Okay. So you, so you su supplement that instead of BCAAs during your workout. How does that change anything? 
I, from what I've seen personally, um, and through the research I've done, um, BCAAs are probably better than EAAs during your workout, right? Because it's only, you're only dealing with three amino acids, I believe, isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Um, the other ones, like your body does need them, but the ones that, the, the one that uh, favors protein synthesis the most will be leucine. It will be leucine because that is like the amino acid that says, oh crap, we have a lot of amino acids. Let's get to work, right? Um, and it depends on the, on the, I guess you would say it depends on the company, like who makes the BCAs or who makes the EAs, like how much of what do they have in it? And is there truly going to benefit me? If, in all honesty, I would search for something that would have a lot of leucine in it, because that's going to be the main signal for your body to say, Hey, we have enough amino acids to initiate protein synthesis. All systems go, let's do it. Heck yeah. Awesome. Well, Dude, I appreciate your time so very, very much. Thank you for being willing to help my bicep brain understand some of this stuff because it's <laughs> what I specialize in, but it clearly is what 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 you specialize in. And every time we talk, man, I just learn so much. And so extremely, extremely grateful. I'm gonna send one of these your way. I hope you like it. It's called Hydra EAA. Uh, by metabolic nutrition, you're asking about the leucine content. So one scoop has 4,500 milligrams. So four and a half grams of leucine. It's got everything else in there too. It's got glycodextrin. Um, Jay, the owner of the, the, the inventor of this product, actually, he's, uh, he, he and his wife are both very, very much live ketogenic lifestyles like my wife and I do. And, um, this glycodextrin, the way that he explained it is it, um, bypasses the whole digestive process that would, that, that would occur when you consume like sugar. And so it goes into your muscle cells without being digested, like normal food really does. And so it doesn't spike your insulin. I tested it. Um, I've been taking these post-workout and um, yeah. Oh, sweet. My sweet. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. It's got a hefty, hefty juice. Excuse me. It's got a hefty, <laughs> It's got a hefty dose of glutamine in it, uh, tyrosine. I mean, like all your other, all 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 your, all your other amino's in it. B vitamins, uh, all your electrolytes, and coconut water. That's like my favorite thing about it because of my uh, stomach. Um, take a lot of caffeine. I take a lot of. Um, I used to I used to take shots of apple cider vinegar. That was definitely not good for my stomach stomach lining. Oh man, that sounds uh like you have some gnarly heartburn after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, anyway, so th this has been helping with the stomach ulcers, I guess is what I'm getting at. So we got, nice. oh, very sweet. yeah, we got three flavors, my man. Uh, this is watermelon. We got blue raspberry and we got fruit punch. Come on, man. Send me the watermelon. Look at my skin color. We <laughs> <laughs> got back to the island not too long ago. I know. Exactly. I'll take some of that, man. I'll take watermelon all day. Cool. All right, man. We'll get this right over to you. I got your address on file. Um, for those listening or watching, this EAA, Hydra EAA is actually brand new on our website, supersetyourlife.com. Hook you up with the discount code HYDRA10. Use HYDRA10, 10% off of these bad boys. Okay. Bernardo, appreciate you, brother. Much love. Thank you so much for helping me to understand this stuff even better. I know that our listeners are going to be amped to hear this. And uh, just thank you so much. Have a good night, man. Always. You too.